Hey guys, this is a due to two here, and I want to welcome you to another uh, part of uh, the Let's Learn Go Together series. Um, in this episode, I want to continue with um, basic opening principles. Um, the first video, part one, I talked about the balance of power, where um, often, I mean, the game of Go is about balance. Um, and uh, especially if you're a weaker player, it's often a good idea to kind of follow your opponent's lead in the beginning until you see a mistake. Or if you're playing white even, um, you know, if uh, black got aside, then you kind of want to get the same amount of territory and you want to be balanced until the fighting starts. That's usually when, um, you know, when the game starts to change, it seems. Um, but now that we've covered that basic principle, I'll give you a little something to think about. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple rules that I've picked up from different Go books, Go magazines, a couple um, basics to think about when you're doing your opening. Um, some people would argue that these are musts, and other people would argue that these are simply guidelines. Um, I'm not in a position to you know, tell you that you must play this way, and I'm not in a position to tell you that these are just guidelines either. I'm not a strong enough player. I'm just uh, going to share them with you and um, try them out and see if they help you. Uh, these rules really help me a lot. Um, when I when I do a review on one of my games and I find that I follow these rules, I usually find that I have a really good opening. And when I realize my opening kind of sucked, uh, I look, look through these rules and I say, oh, well, I didn't do this. and Maybe that's why it sucks so bad. Um, I got my old Goban back for this uh, for this episode, my Chinese Goban, and I have the melanite or plastic stones with bowls, all of which I got from Yellow Mountain Imports. Highly recommend Yellow Mountain Imports. If you guys have any questions about any of these, um, you can see my other videos where I do a review or uh, pop me a comment. All right, so let's start on some opening principles. I'll set my stones over here. Okay, first principle you want to think about is when you do your opening, and remember, all of these are generally speaking. Some of you guys are going to be like, you know, miss me saying generally speaking and yell at me. But generally speaking, I think you all agree. Uh, when you're doing your openings, you want to start on the third or fourth line. What that means is you want 4-4, four, 3-4, four, three, four, or 3-3. Three, three. Okay? Um... And as a beginner, if you don't know any Joseki or many Joseki or any openings, um, you know, give these rules a try. They'll make you a lot stronger. So you want to play on either the third or fourth line, anywhere around here during your openings. Okay. So that's principle number one. Okay. Um, principle number two is you want to start the game. You want to start from the corners, and then you want to move to the sides. And then you want to move to the center. Um, the reason for this is if you start in the center, or basically the reason for this is because the corners are easy, easy points. They're easy to defend. Okay. Um, it takes it takes two moves to defend the corner. Right. This corner is pretty safe for the most part. Right. It takes three moves. To defend a side, okay. Uh, that side, though, not. I mean, just generally speaking. And it takes at least. Let's see if I can make a. I mean, this isn't even totally eye proof, but uh, let, let's just put it this way: it, it takes a lot of, a lot of stones. I would say maybe six or seven. A lot of stones to defend the center because you have to defend uh, diagonals and you have to defend uh, straight ons. Okay, so you want to start uh, with the corners, and this would be kind of like your base, right? And then you want to build a supply line, which would kind of be like your side. And then you want to push toward the center, which is kind of like uncharted territory. You don't want to take a couple guys who have no base and just send them out in the wilderness, right? If you think of think of it like that. Um, and you don't want uh, a, a group of two or three people 
moving, you know, 100 pounds of supplies, right? It's not, it's not going to work. So you want to get a nice base, have a nice, uh, I guess, military fort, and then you want to build your supply line because you don't want to just rush out with no supply line. Build your supply line, and when you're all nice and connected, then from that you push to the, to the center. I hope that analogy kind of helps. Um, so, uh, very basic opening with the game. You want to start on the three or four line, right? Not a huge matter what, uh, whether you're doing cross play or standard play, right? So we have a three four, a four four, and a three three. It's all perfectly fine. Um, now some would argue that this should be here, but other would argue it makes absolutely no difference. Okay, but as a general rule, you're doing okay if you're playing on the 3-4 line and you're starting in the corners. Then you want to start uh, across the sides. So you either want to do an extension of some kind. You want to do an approach of some kind. Or you want to do a splitting move of some kind. But all of those moves constitute moving to the side. Okay? And if there's an empty corner, right, if white does something like this, uh, you usually want to take that corner because you always want to go corners first. If you can get away with taking the corner, take the corner. Um, let me see, is this light bottom? No. No, okay. I think we're good then. Sorry about that. Um, so, play the corners, the sides, and the center. Okay, now, um, Another thing to remember, there are symmetric corners and non-symmetric corners, okay? What that means is um, you have a corner on the 4-4 point, that's a symmetric corner, right? It has three spaces, three spaces, or the 3-3 point, symmetric. But if, you, if you're playing off-centered, put it like that, um, then these are non-symmetric corners, right? It moves like this or this. Um, a general rule states that if you have your choice between approaching a symmetric and an asymmetric corner, you usually want to want to approach the um, the non-symmetric corner. So instead of approaching a four-four point, for instance, um, because in a sense uh, it's already kind of finished, you want to approach an, an unfinished or a non-symmetrical corner. And the reason being um, because from the non-symmetric corners it's easy for them to uh, you know extend out and have a have a nice corner enclosure and you usually want to prevent you want to prevent the corner enclosure over approaching an already partially enclosed stone is probably the main reason for it. Okay, So that's another uh, rule to think about um, when you have your choice of corners to approach uh, you usually get more profit or do more damage to your opponent if you approach uh, a non-symmetrical, unfinished corner. Okay, so that's another thing to think of. Um, now, when you're playing, we'll start a game here. Um, black, white, black. Okay, so now it's White's turn. Um, White wants to. Right here. I'll do I'm going to play a little more. I'm not recommending this play, by the way. Alright. So now we have uh, White's turn, right? Yeah. Um, White wants to do a split or a wedge, right? which means white wants to play either here or here. So how do you decide which one to play? Okay, well you want to play the biggest area first. What that means is, uh, which area is bigger? This one or this one? Well how you figure that out is you count. You go from the furthest stone up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And this one's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, 8 in between the stones. 11 in between the stones. So what that means is this is the larger area. So if you want to split a board, 
meaning if you want a, a base on a board, uh, you want to split it here. Well, not necessarily here, but you want to split it in this space as opposed to this space, right? Um, a couple reasons for that, but the biggest reason is you have more room to maneuver. If you, uh, you know, if you jump in this this tight area here, you know, black does a type of move here, or even if you're here, right, you're still kind of tight for a base. You know, if black does this very slow move here, then you can maybe pull it off, but uh, you're, you're cramped, you're crowded. You don't you you want to avoid that. So the best way to avoid that is to play in the largest area, and then if uh, then if black encroaches on you, then you've still got a good amount of space. Okay, so that's the next principle. Um, another another principle is that when you're playing a game, right? Say this is a game. You want to decide if you're ahead or behind. If you're ahead, you want to create points. If you're behind, you want to attack. Okay, so you want to prefer creation if you're ahead of the game. So right now, let's see. Black has a corner, white has a corner. Black has points here, white has points here, white has this. So it seems to me like white is ahead a little bit. Okay, um, perhaps, perhaps not. But if you feel that you're ahead, then you want to create. Right? For instance, maybe you'd want to play here. Right? Do an extension from here. Then you have a nice double wing. I mean, it's a good extension. Uh, if you feel like you're behind, say, maybe black has... You split here. Right? Well, then extending may not be such a good idea, right? Because as you extend, he'll just keep extending and he'll keep his lead. So you want to stop the lead from happening. Um, one way to do that, say something like this, is to attack, right? You could, you could do a pincer move or you could do an invasion or a reduction or something like that, right? You could do little moves like this. And what they do um, is, uh, they kind of balance it out, they cause a little bit of a fight, a little bit of friction, and uh, after the battle, hopefully you'll come out ahead, and then that you can continue to create. Uh, there's going to be a point in the game when creation isn't an option, but uh, until that happens, you want to keep, uh, you know, keep fighting uh, if you can. But uh, you want, the principle is you want to always create when you're ahead, and then fight when you're behind. Okay. Um, uh, basically, the other the other principles are, are kind of like not so much principles, but kind of tips. Um, uh, the biggest one is when you're playing next to your opponent's strength. For instance, say if Black has a rough strong group here. You, yeah, so Black has a real strong group here. And it's your turn. You don't want to play close to your opponent's strength. Because, obviously, your stone will immediately come under attack. And Black's just going to love it. right? Even if you live, Black's going to end up with a lot, of, uh, a lot more power. So, um, a good tip is you don't want to play any closer than four spaces away from your opponent's strength. So... Here's your opponent's strength. You have an imaginary line right here. One, two, three, four. So maybe here or here. It's probably the closest you want to get. And actually, this is one, two, three, four. So you could probably play here. Uh, any, any closer? And now you're under attack again. Uh, you know, not so good. So, uh, Actually, you should probably be back some more. Yeah, then this doesn't really kind of work. Okay, so four, four, two, three, four. Four spaces away from your opponent's strength. Um, that's tip number one. And then um, tip number two is uh, when you extend, you want to have a nice balance of high and low. Uh, let me give you an example of that. 
and then these are a good amount of principles for you guys to work with. I'll give you a real quick overview uh, at the end here, but let's uh, talk about extensions for a minute uh, for this basic opening. So you're here, and you want to extend, right? Um, you probably, a lot of people would, you know, do a star point, star point extension, right? And there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to realize that it's on the fourth line, um, so it's not uh, very balanced, okay? Um, if you were to play again, this is probably not your best bet, okay? Um, this would probably be a little better, a little safer. Um, you want to try to mix third and fourth line as you extend. Uh, it just it gives you a lot more balance and a lot more strength, uh, and it's a lot more territorial, but it still has the influence. This is all influence. This is all territory. But this, this is territory with good potential for influence. Uh, it's, it's more balanced approach. Okay, so something to think about when you're, um, you know, good example, you have a, this move here, an approach, right, and Black will play this move here. Uh, I mean, there's a c couple answers, but, you know, White will play, Black will play here, White will play down, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up my stones, White will play down, or something similar, something like this. Right? From here, when black extends to make his base, he's probably not going to do something like this, though he can. He's probably more likely going to, instead of being close like this or here, he was going to go a little further and he's going to play down here. And then if he were to extend again from here, he's probably not going to do something like this. He's probably, if there's nothing down here, going to do something like that. Right? This is a nice balanced. Uh, approach to extending and it's something to keep in mind. So it's another tip. Uh, you want to alternate third and fourth line uh, ex you know, growth in your extension. Okay, well uh, I think those are good opening tips. I may or may not get a little more advanced. Uh, remember these are basic tips for um, people who haven't studied openings you know, very well and these are just a couple caveats to you know, move around in your mind. Um, but the tips, the tips are as follows. You want to play on the third and fourth line uh, during your opening. You want to play the corners first, then the sides, and then the center. Uh, if you have your choice to approach a, a symmetrical or non-symmetrical side, uh, it's usually better to approach a non-symmetrical side. Okay, this will prevent them from making a enclosure. Uh, and you'll probably take a little more profit, and kind of screw up their plan a little bit. Um, when deciding where to wedge, you want to wedge in the largest possible area. All right? You want to pick the biggest area to throw a wedge in so you have room to maneuver. Um, you want to prefer creation unless you're behind. Uh, if you're behind, you know, you want to prefer extensions and nonviolent means until you're behind. And when you're behind, you want to make up those points uh, through attacking. Because if you keep creating, then they're going to keep creating, and you're just going to stay behind. Okay. Um, when you're approaching strength, you want to stay at least four spaces away from them to prevent them from counterattacking effectively. Um, you want to seek balanced extensions, meaning you want to uh, alternate third and fourth, and maybe sometimes even second line. Uh, to keep your influence and your territory uh, nicely balanced, right, and you have more flexible shapes when you do that, and um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, you're uh, you're now ready to start uh, putting some of these principles into practice. Let me know what you think. Hope this is helpful for you guys. I know a lot of people had a lot of opening questions. Um, this isn't very specific. It's more, um, more basic. But 
I think there's a need for that. I wish when I started playing, uh, there was somebody to kind of give me these little tips to look out for. And uh, when you win or lose, review your game and see if you follow these tips. And if you lost and you didn't follow these tips, try following them next time and see if they help your game out. But uh, that's about it. I may or may not do a part three. Let me know what you think. I wanted to thank you viewers. Um, keeping it real. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad I, I got some video editing software and now I can uh, put my intro back on. I like my intro. Uh, if you guys need anything, let me know. Any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, I wanted to mention again, I'm on Dragon Ghost Surfer now, the Duda 2. And I'm on KGS, the Duda 2. Um, I'm ranked 11Q on uh, KGS, and I'm uh, working for my 10. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But when I first started doing these videos, I was 16, 17. So uh, in one year, I went up about five ranks, and I'm going to start studying really hard. So hopefully, uh, my goal by the end of the year, like I said before, is to be 8Q, and then by next year, 5Q, and by next year, I want to be pushing dance strength. So we'll see what happens. Uh, once again, thanks for listening. Leave any comments, concerns, criticisms, or just yell at me. You guys have a good day. Later.